Okay, welcome back to the Least Fans and Hostile Lands bonus track because I was up in the wonderful white sands of North Bay. I'm here with Steve, our buddy, Sends correspondent. Steve, have you been to the white sands of North Bay? I can't say that I have yet. I think it's called snow. Ah, those white sands. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of snow up there. I it was seen, a good time. Yeah, I done seen plenty of that in my day. <laughs> so I thought... Craig and Dan did a podcast. I got to get in here. I got to respond to some of the shit that they said. First of all, thank you for the cool leaf school at the end of the podcast. That was that was my little <laughs> little bit I love to do. It was fun. I had a great time. <laughs> and I didn't even have to be there for it. But they talked about Shalgren a little bit. And we're currently watching the game. It's St. Patty's Day. It's past the second period. What do you think about this guy, Shalgren? I am unbelievably impressed. I think that... Uh... He is exactly what they need right now. And this is probably going to be a good thing for Jack Campbell and a good thing for, uh, for Morazic. Both uh, incredible goalies, but, um, you know, have fallen a bit by the wayside over the last while. And maybe they need that spark of a young whippersnapper like Shalgren to come in and get them remotivated and refocused. You think this is sustainable? Think he's going to stick or it's like, okay, a couple games. Also, he still hasn't been scored on. It's the second period. I probably just jinxed it, but. Yeah, you're, you're really jinxy. <laughs> <laughs> um, typically when you, when you make comments like that, but, <laughs> yeah. but you know what, uh, Carolina is probably the best team in the league, maybe under Florida. I don't really know. It's hard to say. Oh, Colorado too. But yes, I mean, at the end of the day, um, he, he's, uh, standing on his head right now for, uh, for the Leafs. Uh, Good saves. Uh, like not just, they're not just, uh, no. saving it for him. Like he's making some solid saves. Yeah, it's no joke. It's no joke. He's he's definitely doing what he needs to do, and and good on him. He's he's getting a lot of street cred by doing what he's doing right now. So I'm happy to see that. Okay, the other boys they talked about Anton Forsberg as a potential trade chip to add to the goalie depth that we may potentially need. Do you think the Sens would give up Forsberg? Uh, uh, this that's a that's a really tough call, Kyle. Um. Do I think that they should give up Forsberg? No, because he has been the only consistent beacon in Nets. And even when he's lost, he hasn't been blown out. He's not letting in eight goals, you know. Um, he, he's doing pretty, pretty well. But the Leafs, like, and, and the one thing that a lot of people don't know about Anton Forsberg is how incredibly hard he works and trains. Uh, he's, he's a monster in the gym. You know, as a Sens fan, I don't, I don't really want to say that anybody would be a good fit for the Leafs, but, but I will tell you that he's definitely made his his case to be a starting goalie in the NHL, and uh, we're not going to benefit from him this year. So why not? I'd rather, I'd rather see a Canadian team succeed than not succeed. Okay, so yes, trade Forsberg to get some assets back because you never know if he might play himself out of the Sens territory. Correct. And even when a goalie plays themselves out of contention as a Sens goalie, it's not necessarily the goalie's fault. It's, no. It's quite, it's quite honestly usually the rest of the team, you know. And, and he's played uh, throughout a lot of uh, dark points for the Sens this year, whether it's uh, the COVID um, issues that they went through early on. Yes. Or uh, just the sheer volume of injuries that they've they've had they've lost they played with basically no centers this year uh for the majority of the year no no natural centers mm -hmm. and uh and and even throughout covid he was still pulling off wins in in games that they had no business winning so yeah especially the end of last year they really made a, a surge at the end not maybe so much for the playoffs but in the canadian division Really, really, sorry, the North Division. Yeah, the North. The North. We're the North. But he gave them a run for their money. Do you think that Forsberg would re-sign with Ottawa, if not traded? I mean, it depends on, on what Melnick is willing to offer. I mean, they've, always, they've, they've got uh, Murray uh, at, at a fairly rich contract right now. Uh, and I think we all know that Melnick is not a, a huge fan um, of spending money. And could... Murray's injured right now? Yeah. yeah. 6.25 injured right now so it's Forsberg and Gustafson oof if they traded Forsberg it's Gustafson and and Murray but and, Murray's injured and Mad Sogard Sogard okay but Sogard's supposed to be he's very good very good okay yeah, he's, he's a okay. good goaltender I think Sogard's is, is is better than Gustafson interesting good to know for my fantasy because I have Gustafson mm -hmm. <laughs> but I mean you have to also understand that Gustafson 
has barely played. Mm-hmm. Even the last game that he played, he, he was a cold goalie going into the last game that he played. Right. And and he let in four goals or something on 19 shots. And you can't necessarily blame him entirely for that. Okay. Uh, okay. There, was, there was definitely some, I think there was something like five breakaways or something given up in that game. That's not fun. That he played. No, that's not fun for any goalie. It, it, it's hard to say how good... Or, or how bad he played, but he played well in Belleville. Yeah. Uh, but there's competition down there for the, the lead goalie spot, and, and, and Sogard's winning that right now. Okay, I've got a couple questions continuing with the goalies. Let's say Forsberg does resign. What kind of number do you think he might resign for? We're talking sticking around his 900000 Does he get a raise because he's done so well, even in Ottawa, up to the $2 million? Or do you think he's even good enough to get the three, four, five million? Uh, like, personally... If I if I sit back objectively and I look at the work ethic that he has as a goalie, and I think he's thirteen and ten or something this year, sure. Uh, which for for being a Sens goaltender this year is quite phenomenal. Um, I think he could hit the three million mark. I don't I don't think he could go beyond that. Maybe his next contract could be higher. But if the Sens were to sign him, which I personally think they should, because he is. He's faced every adversity that that's been thrown at him, and he's played quite well. Yeah, I don't know. Like he he deserves the opportunity to to play with the Sens. Does anybody really want to play with the Sens when they're as streaky as they are as a goaltender? Right. I don't really know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think another team who's objectively sat back and watched him play this year would be like, okay, if our defensive core was in front of him, he would be winning even more. Okay. So, yeah, I. Trade him. They shouldn't trade him, but... They shouldn't, but they should. They, but but they should. Yeah. He deserves an opportunity to be a, a starting goaltender. Yep. Um, with At 29, a, with that's a about team. right for a starting goaltender. I agree with that. Would you rather see Gustafson be traded and try to get some assets back for him because Sogard is coming up? Yep. Okay, yep. that was fast. I would. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? Um. I mean, Gus is a uh, every, every Sens goaltender this year, for the most part, has been under 900 save percentage. Right. For the most part, Gus is under 900. Murray is actually, I think, 918 because he had a good stretch. And Gus, I think, is around 910. Oh, he's probably lower than some, that. Is oh, it, he's gotten shelled a couple times. I don't know. Like, as far as like his season average or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, so I mean, from a save percentage standpoint, no, nobody is really, nobody's really wowing, you know, the crease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if if I if I had to make a decision right now, where I was like, okay, would I rather keep Murray or would I rather keep Forsberg? That I want to go all in on, I'd be going all in on on Forsberg. Oh, for sure, for sure. Murray is unmovable though, like six point two five with the yeah. numbers he's putting up. Yeah, he's played some great games this year. He's had some great stretches, but. You know, the the sad thing about Murray is, like, he might only let in one or two goals during some of the losses, but the Sens aren't scoring in front of him. Right. But when yeah. you have Norris and Batherson out, that's really tough. Yeah. And now Shabbat out? Hmm. It's going to be a little tougher. Okay, Forsberg gets traded. What do you think is fair value to come the other way? Are we talking, like, a third-round pick? Are we talking a second-round pick? Are we talking even a first-round pick or prospect kind of equivalent? If we're talking about the Leafs picking him up, okay. <laughs> in division, I feel like that costs more. Yeah, yeah. No, it does. I mean, he, I don't think he's worth a first round pick, um, unless it's like, well, okay, if it's first round, like thirtieth, yeah, yeah, to thirty second, and maybe. Or something, yeah. But I think you would probably look at a, a multi pick trade, uh, maybe a second and a fourth, or a second and a fifth. Uh, I don't think you're going to get players in no. return for yeah. him. Maybe fringe players, like well, maybe a fringe player, something like that. Yeah, yeah. But if you look at the Leafs, you know, overall, there's probably not a lot of people that they'd be willing to, unless they're very much in the AHL and this is a project for you, sort of thing. Yeah, no, I'm talking about gotcha. like active Leaf players or whatever, right? You know, yeah. But yes, I mean, unless it, it's Mrazek going the other way, you want that? I mean, I I take it. We could certainly do worse. I think Peter Mrazek is a is a very solid goaltender. But again, I mean, goalies can only be as good as the people that play in front of them in a True. lot of situations. And the Leafs are feeling that. Yeah, are they ever? <laughs> are they ever? 
you know, we talked to, or earlier, Kyle, about, you know, Jack Campbell up until probably um, All-Star Game. All-Star Game. Yep was a gangbusters goalie like he was just unbelievable and and had like when you look at his regular season record you shake your head and you're like damn Vesna caliber yes regular season goaltender yes until one thousand <laughs> percent until some of the collapses and it's hard to believe that those collapses happen because the Leafs have an unbelievable amount of skilled players Tavares Matthews Marner, Morgan Riley, we talked about, is is obviously playing a lot better since he signed his contract. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mikhaev, you know, is 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 playing okay. Not, he's doing not, his role. I yeah, think not a great shot, but I think he's he's got a lot uh, a lot more goals probably than than a lot of people would have anticipated that he that he would have received. But the the Leafs are deep, though they they, they really are. They've got depth, you know, and and when you've still got people like Spezza as a good leader, um, I don't know. They got something. They got something. They, they do. They've got a lot. Okay, same question about Gustafson. Do you think more comes back? No. Maybe maybe even not from the Leafs? You think Forsberg is worth more at the trade deadline? Oh, yeah. I think he's worth significantly okay, more. Okay, interesting, interesting. You know, but, I mean, Gus hasn't had a chance to really prove himself this year yeah. in the NHL. He's and... not a trade deadline guy. He's more of an off-season potential move because mm-hmm. he's only 23, still in his first deal. Yeah, you listen to people like uh, I don't know if you if you follow the the Leaf, uh, sorry the Sens media folks, but uh, Bruce Garriock is is probably one of the most outspoken analysts or whatever. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And and Bruce says, no, we're going to go all in on Gustafson. And I'd not sure. No, you know, most of the time when I hear Bruce Garriock say something, I have the complete opposite opinion. <laughs> they do. He does this thing with Cheryl Pounder uh, on on TSN. That's uh, it's called yay or nay, and every single time it's like I, I 100% agree with Cheryl Pounder <laughs> on the yays, and I 100% disagree on Gary Ock on the nays. So I I don't know. This guy spoke at my high school graduation. He was the guy that I, when I went to Crean Wilson came because he went to that school, and he's like, hey, this is what I do for a living. And I was like, all right, really cool. And then I then I listened to his his um uh his commentary and i'm uh, i don't know i'm not so sure not so sure i feel like you're getting paid to make the comments that you're making because they just don't seem to make sense numerically so you heard it here first steve is a so guard guy not so much a gustison guy but were you a craig anderson guy back in the day a thousand percent do you think that the leafs would benefit from getting someone like craig anderson now from one year just the just this year that's it yeah i mean you Craig's 41, I think. Okay. Might might even be older. And and I really believe that like Craig Anderson is just a solid goaltender. It doesn't really matter where he played. He was more solid with Ottawa and and this year playing with Buffalo. He did well based he's their on best goalie by ba- far. Based on what he had. Yeah, yeah, he's by far the best goalie. You know, and you don't want to give something like that up, but at the same time, the longevity factor is not there. Right. Like, time is not on his side. Um but He's a guy for his age that stays in incredible shape and just has really good sense about what angle the puck's coming in at. A little stability. Yeah. That ni- might be nice. Okay. So we're going for Forsberg or Anderson. That's what I'm going to say. Yay, goalies. I not Flurry. We don't need Flurry. Flurry's too much. Yeah, Flurry's too much. Or do you think he's just not going to come to Toronto? Well, I mean, where's the, sp- I mean, where's the space to, to bring him on? I mean, right. Cap space. Yeah. yeah. Like, I just don't understand how that's possible. That's like, Chicago retains 50 and somebody else retains 25. So you're giving up several picks, not only yes. to get flurry, but for the retention of money. And then you're giving another pick to another team, kind of like they would did with Felino for a couple months of potentially good flurry, but also maybe not. The Fligs made me really sad, by the way, because oh, I thought so that he sad. was I thought that he was going to be a massive game changer. For and he the was Leafs. the perfect guy they needed. He was just, injured during the time and now he is currently injured with boston so in retrospect good that we didn't re-sign him especially at the number he re-signed like, oh yeah yeah 100 percent. okay more on the sends what do you think they should do before monday's trade deadline or on monday's trade deadline who do you think maybe should go and what kind of assets do you think the Sens should be looking to get? You know, as far as people that we could let go that are in the current lineup, yep. maybe Victor Mete 
uh, on defense yes. um, could yield something. That could um, yield a lot. He's yeah. still only 23, yeah. arbitration eligible next year. Okay. Yeah. Michael Del Sato is, is rotten in the minors, I think, right now, if I remember correctly. Yep. You know, and, and he's still got some gas left in the tank. Especially yeah, only 31. From a, from yeah. a playoff standpoint, um, he, he's definitely got some potential. What I'm going to say now is probably a little bit um, controversial. Go for it. Go for it. Not like there's any consequences on this podcast. <laughs> Eric Brandstrom. I, I, I honestly think that Okay. Okay. I, I think that we should cut ties. He Okay. He can get the pucks in deep. I, I just don't think that. Might not be a fit. He's just not a fit. You know, I don't, I don't think he was a fit in Vegas either. Yeah. Quite honestly, when he was there. Um, I think he's a little bit overrated. I think his, I think he has potential. If, if I was to say, okay, I want to get something substantial in return. It's probably your guy. That's probably the guy that I would say, okay. And maybe throw in whatever else they want and just like, okay, here's a, here's a first. Yeah. And change. Yeah. Now, if Jake Sanderson wasn't uh, going to play in the NHL for the Ottawa Senators, that would be a different statement. Okay. Because we wouldn't have a, as much depth. Uh, but Jake Sanderson is coming up, and Jake Sanderson is going to be a Thomas Shabbat level defenseman. Right. Yes. Maybe even better. Cool. Than Thomas Shabbat. He's not going to play as many minutes um, because who can? Right. <laughs> like, it's very, it, it's very lopsided how many minutes that Shabbat plays. But um, yeah, because we have him, I, I think we could actually probably eke out a first if we wanted to. Yep. If we were to get rid of Brandstrom. Okay, quick, quick questions on this one. I'm just going to name off a player who ex- has an expiring deal. You tell me yes or no, trade at the trade deadline. That's it. Chris Tierney. Yes. Zach Sanford. Yes. Nicholas Paul. No. Why? Uh, he's probably the hardest player on the ice. Um, like uh, toughness-wise? Uh, how aggressive he plays, how, how aggressive he goes after pucks. He's got a good stick, uh, to knock down, uh, to knock down offensive rushes. You know, he's, he's got a lot of speed. Um, he just plays the game right. You know, what's his plus minus this year? No idea. I'm on cap friendly, not stats. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, but no, but he's, 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 he's worth holding on to. I don't, (laughs) again, it's, there's a Melnick factor. Yes, of course. It comes in with our team. And when you have a cheap owner. It's very hard to retain talent uh, properly, but no, I mean, Nicky Paul 100% deserves to, to play with the Sens, and, you know, he's got a good relationship with uh, Shabbat and with um, Chucky, so. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, Dylan Gambrell, never heard of this human. Oh, uh, Gambrell came from uh, San Jose. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'd like to hold on to Gambrell. Hold on to him. Uh, Adam Gaudet, trade or hold on? Mm. Okay, so... Gaudet has got a phenomenal shot. He's a very offensively skilled player, but probably won't get the shake that he deserves in Ottawa mm-hmm. to make an impact. So I say let's get something for him. Tyler Ennis. Streaky as heck. When he's on, he's phenomenal. When he's off, he's garbage. Um, he's sat a four-game and a five-game streak this year. It's cut or losses. Okay. Uh, Josh Brown. Eh. I'm indifferent. If he goes, he goes. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine with that. I think that's basically it, unless we're digging into the minors, and I'm not going to scroll down that far. That was fun. You're fun. I'm fun. You are. It's St. Patty's Day. Of course we're fun. Yeah, 100%. This is a great time. Yeah, it was a really great time. The Leafs are still winning, which is also a good time. Shalgren, unfortunately, has been scored on, but that's okay. They're still winning, and he will continue to have a winning record, except for that time that Matthew Stick got held, and they did talk about this on the podcast. I am absolutely still bitter about that. Matthew's every right to be super angry at that ref and to show it and the ref not looking at him like no eye contact nothing like fuck that ref no way that's just a fucking nhl ref buddy (laughs) i'm telling you they're not winning they're not winning people over with with uh the way they call games with the way they call games Uh, no they're not can't wait for the playoffs when they completely change how they call games you never know what's it's amazing the the switch that flips (laughs) in the playoffs is something Ah, we're just gonna let it go i know he got cross-checked to the throat but That's okay. We're just going to let it go. My God. Oh, my God. Okay. Don't forget to check out on the radio and or your favorite music streaming app. Ipe app. Iper app. Iper app. Uh, Slancha. Did I get that right? Slancha. Slancha by Steve Steve Meeting. Meeting. That's exciting. 
It's going to be fun. We're going to play that tune one day, right? Uh, yeah, 100%. We're going to play that tune. I play drums. If you didn't know already. And that's... That was Kyle. That was me. That whole thing at the beginning of every podcast is Kyle. It's amazing. All right. Thanks for coming on, Steve. This was a fun little mini podcast. Uh, I appreciate you having me as always, bud. Sweet. Can't Peace wait soon. for the playoffs. Go Leafs go, right? Go Leafs go! <laughs> Got him to say it. <laughs> oh, no.